Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the Bailey Wiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. Today, we're going to be discussing our favorite way to start creating a scene in Foundry VTT, and that's with Terrain Spawners. These are an amazing piece of tech that allow you to drop in a tile that will automatically adjust to the size of your scene and select from a variety of high-quality tileable backgrounds to get you a beautiful backdrop for the rest of your scene that is going to be unique every time and get you right on your way to creating a gorgeous scene for your games. There's a ton of great features and ways to use terrain spawners. You can select any overlay that you would like. You can then make adjustments after the fact for panning, zooming, rotating, and even adding motion to a backdrop. This is especially effective for your traveling scenes where you want to really give that idea of motion and movement. In today's demonstration here, we're going to be focusing on cave assets, and those are a part of our brand new release for our patrons that is available today for everyone on Patreon. So if you like what you see in this tutorial and showcase, then hop on over to Patreon and take a look. Now for today's showcase, we're going to start off by discussing what you need and how to use these terrain spawners. Then we'll go over what makes them tick, exactly how they're working, ways to customize them, and then some practical demonstrations of building scenes with the terrain spawners and with templates using those terrain spawners. If that all sounds good, then let's dive right in. In order to use these spawners, there's a few modules that we're going to need. First up, we have Mass Edit, which is the way we actually browse these spawners and handle some scripts. We have Token Magic Effects, which is handling the actual image overlays here. Monk's Active Tile Triggers and Tagger power the dialogue features and also allow us to target things with Token Magic Effects in a really robust way. And then we also have Dig Down, which is going to make the searchable feature a lot more powerful. You can also optionally add in File Picker Plus from Ripper or another module that allows you to preview files in the file browser by hovering over them rather than having to switch to a thumbnail or tile view. And of course, all of the spawners that we're going to be demonstrating here today in all of these scenes can be found in the Bailiwiki Towns module, and all of these cave assets are available in today's release. Once we have all of our modules installed, the first thing we'll want to do is go to our configure game settings here, and we're going to go to the rebuild file cache button, and this is from dig down. We're going to go ahead and click on that, and it's going to begin building out the file cache. This is always going to be stuck at 99%, so don't expect it to go to 100%, and don't sit here waiting for it to go there. Instead, uh, you're going to be looking for a pop-up that will be in the top here that will tell us when dig down is finished. And at that point, then we can go ahead and refresh. So our cache is done. And when we refresh, this bar will disappear. Otherwise, it's going to hang out here for a very long time. Now that we've refreshed, we can see the progress bar is no longer there. And what that does is it allows us to populate kind of the fuzzy search feature of dig down. So normally when you're searching in Foundry in the file browser, if you enter in this search bar, it's only going to search within the folder you're currently in. But with dig down, if I search something like cave, it's going to give me all of these results that are inside of folders. And I'm using file picker plus here, and that's what's giving me this nice preview in the top left. You can see right here that this isn't much of an issue in terms of all of these image sizes, but if you're dealing with really large images like we are now, it's really nice because if you use the list view, it loads much faster. And this is true with anything in Foundry, not just if you're using Dig Down or File Picker Plus, just if you have a lot of large image files. For example, if I search up Tileable, we have some really large images. You can see that they're up to 4K, sometimes even more than that. And these images take a very long time to load if you are in the tiles or images view, etc. So that's where something like File Picker Plus comes in handy to allow you to preview these things without having to wait as long for everything to load. With Dig Down in hand, in order to use the spawners, you're simply going to open up your Mass Edit Resets library here. And all of these are going to be found inside of the Tiles section. You can also go to the all area or you can favorite these and then it's inside of the bailiwiki folder 
and it's going to be inside of furnishings and special and terrain spawners and we have four different terrain spawners but these are highly flexible so you can use a variety of different options here even with just these four so with today's release we have this new caves and mine spawner and we're just going to double click and it gives us this nice preview and when i click you'll notice that this image automatically moved and adjusted to the size of my scene it doesn't matter how large or small my scene is or the dimensions it's going to automatically snap to it and then I am just going to select my favorite or preferred image here and hit select file. And then we have our nice little image. And then this is set up with Monk's active tile triggers. And so if we go into our token mode and we double click, we'll get this nice little dialogue that pops up. And we have three options here. The first is to adjust the position. Then we have change overlay and don't show again. We're going to start off with the most intuitive, which is change overlay. If you click on that, it's going to fire a new macro. And this is going into a folder that has most of our big tileable terrains here for you to choose from. And you can then go into other subfolders like, again, caves and mines. And you can choose a different one. Maybe I want one with these mine tracks here. And then you can select the file, and it will change this kind of source overlay. Another way to adjust that source overlay is when we select this change overlay section, we have these options inside of these folders that you can navigate to, but then also the reason why we selected dig down is if we navigate up to say just our user data all the way up at the top or all the way outside of towns, etc. then if you search in tileable, then we're gonna get all of these different options. And basically anything that says tileable here is going to be a great choice for a background. So if we select, say, this lava here, then this is a pretty good source image as well. And a lot of these exist inside of our different tileable overlay terrain macros that are static rather than having the file picker. So there's a lot of great options in here. So if you search that tileable up, you're going to be able to see everything. And that's why we have dig down in place. Then if we double click on this, we can adjust the position. And with this, it allows us to pan and scroll around through this image. We can also randomize. And that allows us to find maybe different views that we want until we get something that we're happy with. And then of course we can zoom in further or rotate things until we are happy. And then if you want to make this a moving scene, which may not make as much sense in a cave, but if you were using an overland type of view, you can also use these scrolling effects down at the bottom and adjust speeds, etc. there. This can also be helpful for adjusting just slightly in different increments or being able to view the whole image very quickly. Whenever you're happy with it, you can click this don't show again. And what this does is it's, as described here, going to deactivate the tile as far as among active tile triggers is concerned. And so we're no longer going to be able to just double click this with our token tools enabled. We can still activate it by going to our tile tools, having this selected and then right clicking. And then we can click this manually trigger option and it will still bring this up. And if we ever want to bring this back to where we can use the token tools again, we can click on this image that has kind of a person with an aura around them, and that's the toggle active state from Monk's active tile triggers. You can also, with your tile tools, double click to open this and go to the trigger section for Monk's active tiles and select active, and that will also bring it up. And you can confirm that by having that little orange outline around the person with an aura icon that shows that it's active and we can use this. So that is the absolute basics of how to use one of these spawners, but how is it working exactly? Well, if we open up the tile first, we'll take a look on the basic section and we'll see that this is tagged with unlimited terrain and background, which is important for our targeting as we get into Monk's active tile triggers. Then. An important thing to notice is if you look at the tile image or video here, this is actually a black square. So this is simply 
a square that is just black. As you can see in that preview in the top left, it is just a black square. There's no image attached to this. So what we're doing here is we're using a token magic effects filter to apply an overlay, and we're taking a source image and then tiling it infinitely across this particular tile. So by using a simple black square, we're able to take a really easy shape and expand it, distort it, however we want to fit the needs of our scene. And then using token magic effects, we then apply our actual image that we want, and then we can zoom in and manipulate it all using token magic effects. In order to call that token magic effects filter, we're using Monk's active tau triggers here. So if we now go into the actions, you can see we have a pretty simple dialog here that is going to have it just open up the different pieces and adjust the position, change overlay, and don't show again. And they're going to go to these different landings here. And you can see they're nice and color-coded thanks to MATT. And the main things that we're doing here is our, we're sending information to the GM, and then we're also running macros. And this macro is inside of the nuts and bolts module. And you can check it out if you're interested in taking a look. But basically, it's opening up a specific file picker. And then whenever we have selected the file that we want, it's then going to create a token magic effect overlay on top of this tile here that has been tagged with the background tag. And for the adjustment landing, we're firing a different macro that is going to be our targeted scrolling macro that again is using this background tag to tell it what tiles to affect. And then finally, deactivate is just going to simply turn off the tile. For the macros and how they work, we're not going to dive into exactly how token magic effects works here, but there is a way where we have this section that's getting the tag that we're going to be using from the argument on Monk's active tau triggers. So if we go back here and again, we look at this run macro. In arguments, we have background, which matches on this particular tile, one of the tags of background. So we just put in the argument background, and that's where we're getting this piece from. And then we're running through what's more or less our standard token magic effects filter here for applying an overlay. And then just at the end, rather than using token magic effects, usual apply filters to selected, we're adding update filters for every object within this kind of searched up array of options that have the tags from tagger. So don't worry if this is confusing. You don't really need to know how to set this up specifically or the exact ins and outs, but basically this is allowing us to put in the name of a tag here and then it's putting into our macro and then our macro is affecting the things with that tag. This will not work by itself if you were just running it from your uh, macro bar. There's no way to tell it what specific tag you want. You would have to make an adjustment there. But so this works specifically with Monk's active tile triggers and token magic effects to be able to apply to a specific type of tile being the background tagged tiles. So that's how the macros work here. But as we discussed earlier, it doesn't matter what size our scene is. So here this is a more elongated type of scene. And if I bring in, say, this islands preset, Again, we'll notice that it automatically snaps here. And what's powering this actually is going to be mass edit. So if you go into mass edit and you right click on the spawner and you select edit, then under spawning, you can see that we have some extra pieces here. There is actually a script. That is allowing us to First, update the size of the object, and it's just reading from the canvas dimensions. So that's how it's automatically adjusting here. It doesn't matter, again, what size scene you've got. It will automatically expand and set itself to the right position for your scene. And then we are basically running 
the token magic effect filter that we had earlier into the spawning script immediately. So rather than requiring us to activate this tile and bring up the dialogue, we're automatically bringing up the file picker and then using the information from the file picker to then create the filter for token magic effects here. So this first section again is adjusting the size of the tile and its position. And then the next section is actually applying that token magic effect. Now that we understand how to use these and how exactly they work, let's discuss some customization or specific versions that you might want to create for your own use. A really easy customization that you can do is just changing the starting folder for the file picker. We've been using this Caves and Mines and starting inside of this specific folder for Caves and Mines. But what if you wanted to use, say, Deserts or another folder that you keep all of the custom tileable terrains that you've created for using in spawners. Well, that's a pretty easy solution. We could, of course, just use the more generic unlimited terrain one and use the search function, but we can drill down to a specific folder very easily. The first thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and duplicate the spawner we're starting from, and then we're going to start with mass edit first and select edit, go to spawning and expand out the post spawn script. And then down here in this new file picker, we're going to paste in for the current section. We're going to change it to our desired folder. So here I am using the folder from this random overlay terrain desert macro that we worked with earlier. And that is all I'm going to set there. You could also grab this file path from a tile you like or your file browser, whatever you would prefer. It doesn't really matter how you get there. There's just a variety of options. And that's all we're gonna change there. And once we hit apply, we'll go ahead and test this out. And we'll see that we're actually in desert. And there we have it. Now, of course, when we activate this and we select change overlay, we're gonna get that file browser and we're gonna go back to this kind of starting point that we have that's more generic. But if we wanna have our starting file browser different, then we're just gonna go into our triggers here. And in actions, we've got this run macro, which is using this Tomb Effects street overlay with file picker tagger macro. And I've gone ahead and brought that in. So this is the macro that's currently firing. Just this is firing from the compendium version and I brought this one in. We'll see that the current, just like in our mass edit section, has a specific folder specified. We can adjust that and create another version. And this is a desert version here where I've gone ahead and all I've done is same thing as we did in the mass edit post spawn script. We've just replaced the folder inside of this current section with the folder we want to go to. And so now if we hit the edit and we go to select, we open up our macros directory, and then we can select this desert overlay with file picker and then update. And with that updated, now when we click on this and select change overlay, we're gonna have this desert section. And from here, you want to make sure that you go ahead and push this to our spawner. So we'll select edit on the spawner, and then we're going to select assign tile and hit apply. And so now when I drag this out, I will have my desert option. And we'll see that if we activate this, we've got that same overlay that starts in desert. And again, that overlay is gonna to apply to both since they both have the background option. We can go ahead and get rid of this one. And then the last thing you probably wanna do is edit this and make sure that you have a name that makes sense here. So you may want to do that earlier or change the thumbnail image, however you see fit. And then now you have your nice unlimited terrain spawner that is for a specific folder that you have set up. 
So that's another really easy customization you can do that makes this really easy and user-friendly. Obviously, you have these great spawner options already available to you with the BeoWiki module. There's also a collection of macros inside of our nuts and bolts compendium, which inside of our utility pieces, we've got the nuts and bolts macros, and inside of token magic effects, we have all kinds of pieces here. And if you also search terrain, there is a variety of random overlay terrains, and they all kind of work in this manner right here where if you execute the macro, it's going to apply to whatever you have selected. So if I run this snowy overlay, it's going to create that overlay effect on our selected tile. So what if you wanted to create a custom one of those? Well, that's pretty simple. All you have to do is bring in one of those macros like we have here from this desert, and you're just gonna change these image paths here in this randomized section. And I've already gone ahead and done that on this random cave slash mine one. You can see all I did was for this image path, I just changed them all to be these new cave tiles that we have in this release. So when I have things selected and I am pressing this macro key, it's cycling through this. Now this is a pretty small tile, so you might not see the detail as much. But what's nice about this is that it's just randomly picking one for me and randomizing it, kind of similar to when we use that randomize position on the adjust position dialog box. It's just randomly picking for me, but this is also randomizing the image between a small selection. So it can be nice if you want to narrow things down, you don't wanna look at the file browser, you just wanna go, then that's where something like this would be great. So to create that custom version, you're first going to replace all of the images with the ones that you want to be using. Again, in this case, I'm using all the ones from our latest release. And then this is still the selected version. So we'll need to make a copy of this and then add some of that tagger logic to it if we want to apply it to things that are tagged and set up our own custom spawner. Now to set this up with taggers so that we can use it for that nice dialogue with Monk's Active Tile Triggers, we're gonna go in here and we're going to duplicate the macro that we created. And then I'm gonna add this parentheses tagger so it's mirroring our other pieces like that. You can also say targeted, whatever you feel like. If we expand this out. And then I'm gonna open up the desert targeted version that I already made. So the first thing that we'll need to do is have this let tag section and throw that up there. And then down at the bottom, instead of this await token magic effects, we're just going to replace that with await tagger, this little section that's having our array that's going to be searching through and replacing everything. And then when we save this macro, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it to my bar so we have it nice and handy. We'll then be able to run that using our background. And so the easiest way to set up your own spawner now using that customized section is go into your mass edit presets and we're just gonna duplicate this version here. And whenever you duplicate something that's in one of these externals, it's gonna go into your local working directory. So I've already got this folder for terrain spawners and this is just a carbon copy of this original one. And I'm gonna go ahead and spawn this in and we'll select the tile. And now that I have this in here, I'm going to go ahead and double click it and go into my triggers, actions, and then this run macro, I'm going to change from this one that's from the Bailiwiki compendium to the one I just created of the random cave mine with tagger. And we're gonna leave it as background and update. So it's worth noting that you can select other macros from compendiums. So if you want to store these macros in a compendium instead of having them in your macros directory, you can. You can also select things from here whenever you're using the target. And with this tile update, let's give it a test. And so when I hit this change overlay, it should just randomly pick a new piece. For further customization of the Monk's Active Tile Triggers experience, 
you can do pretty much whatever you want. The world is your oyster here. Like we can get rid of the notification that tells you about dig down, etc. But you can also add in things like additional landings and dialogues to help have the workflow that you want the most. Like maybe you want a landing up at the top and you want another dialogue after you have run this change macro that either cancels things out, takes you back to the beginning or repeats the change option and we'll apply another random one. You can add all of those in. We're not gonna cover them in this particular tutorial, but we've got a whole series on automating Foundry that you can check out that discusses that a little bit more heavily. Then after we've set that up to use that specific kind of biome random picker, we then probably wanna also adjust our spawner. If we're wanting to use just a random selection of images already randomized for us, where we don't have to think about what image we're picking, then we probably wanna adjust that spawner text in the mass edit window. So we go into spawning and we increase the size here quite a bit of our script and we move this spawner over. We can see we have all of that script that's handling the initial token magic effects filter. Like we said, this is basically just a variation on the token magic effects macro that we already created. So here, I'm not gonna touch the top part because this is what's adjusting our tile to our scene. But what I am going to adjust is I'm going to get rid of this file picker section and I'm gonna delete everything above the let params section get deleted. And technically we're not gonna use this let params section specifically again. However, it's nice to have that there just for kind of keeping track of what I need and what I don't. And at the bottom, I'm gonna get rid of these closing brackets and parentheses with the browse. That's all part of that file picker function. So what I'm left with is just kind of an initial filter for token magic effects. And what I'm going to do is I'm then going to open up my random cave mine uh, macro that I created earlier. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this let param section then we're gonna copy it, and we're going to paste it in place of the let param section we had previously. And we will go ahead and apply this. I'm also going to edit and then rename this from limited to random. It is still unlimited, but it's nice to have some kind of naming distinction. All right. So now just as a test, when we drag out this new version, it's automatically applying this random macro that we created. So we've got that filter incorporated properly. Now, of course, this one has not been updated to use our new macro, so we need to update that. So with our tile that we have customized, we can confirm that by hitting the change overlay, and it has our randomized macro there. So we've got this selected. We're gonna go ahead and edit our spawner again, and we're gonna hit assign tile, and then we're gonna make sure we hit apply. It's really easy to forget to hit apply and then not actually have your changes saved and wonder what went wrong. But now we're going to drop this in. And just as a quick test, if we hit change overlay, we'll see that it changed the overlay. And we'll notice that the overlay changed for both of these actually. And as a matter of fact, it's the exact same data. And that's because both of these have the background tile. So you can also have several background tiles and apply all of these different changes to them at the same time. Note that though, each time you execute the script, it's going to change everything for all of them. So you wanna be really careful about how you use that in particular. But now we've got this really great, just completely random spawner that we don't have to think about. We just drop it in, it's ready to go. So it's a really nice little feature there that we've built for ourselves and you can then get as granular as you want on any of these. As we mentioned earlier, terrain spawners are one of our favorite ways to start creating a scene. And so we're gonna do a practical demonstration here using just from scratch a terrain spawner. So I'm gonna go into mass edit. I'm gonna look at my terrain spawners, either the ones that come with the BailiWiki module or the ones I've created myself. So I'm first gonna start with this island spawner here and we're gonna just place it. And even though the starting tile was a lot bigger than my scene, once I place it, it automatically adjusts as we discussed. And I'm gonna find kind of a source that I like. 
Now, it's important to note when you're looking for what to start with that you shouldn't consider the entirety of it per se, because again, we're zoomed in and rotated and panned to different sections. So don't worry about the overall image here. Look for sections of it that might be interesting to you because you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna be pretty zoomed in whenever you are working with these. Let's go with number two here. And then from there, if you did great on that first roll, as Bailey sometimes says, then you're good. But if you want to adjust the position, we also like to hit randomize a few times until we get something pretty close. There we go. And then we can make further adjustments by zooming in and panning. And that seems pretty good right there. So when that's all set, then it's very easy to just say don't show again, and then we won't accidentally manipulate this or trigger the tile. And now we're ready to start adding in other features. So if we go into mass edit, once again, I'm going to global now because we have a variety of assets and resources for us to use both in tiles and in tokens in the form of prefabs. And so here in the thatch huts, we've got a lot of different options for a kind of beach theme. And with mass edit, it's really easy. We get this nice preview and I'm holding down control while I'm using my scroll wheel to be able to rotate this building to get it exactly how I want. And then I'm just going to drop it in place. If I want to adjust this further, I can hold down Alt to scale it up and down. I can hit H and V to mirror it horizontally and vertically respectively, and that's gonna to apply to everything within it. So as you can see, the walls are adjusting as well as I'm mirroring this. And then I'm just going to left click and place it. And now we have this fully functioning preset right here. It's full building ready to go. So very nice, very slick right there. And I can continue populating this with buildings. And this is kind of how I would start to build out my scene. I first get my train spawner in, I get something generally that I like, and then I start putting in kind of the larger features such as homes or buildings, merchants, etc. There's also a variety of different facade options for kind of fake buildings that don't actually have any interiors, just the walls. And that could be nice for kind of populating the scene without making it too dense for our players. You know, some buildings are just locked up or not around. And you can always hit Control Z to undo anything. And then put it in place. Once I have kind of the main features I'm going for here, I can look at some clutter. For continuing to build out a scene, I can use these brushes. And a brush, usually, if you go to spawn it, you'll see that there are a bunch of different barrel assets here. If I cancel that out and I select brush, it's going to be only a single barrel. And as I place things, it's going to randomly select through here. I can manipulate it by scaling it up or rotating it like I can with other mass edit presets. If I don't like the item I have, I can hold down control and shift to cycle through these until I find ones that I prefer. And then we can also add in things like extra foliage. 
And very quickly, we've got something coming together here with not a lot of time. And I'm using some multi-level prefabs, so I'm gonna go ahead and get levels from this scene. And I have my levels set up here. And then this is gonna make it nice and easy to grab any of these barrels that I don't want or reposition them. And we've got that set up. So now the last bit would be just walling in according to the rest of the terrain that we brought in. So I can use my terrain walls. Then we can finish up with any extra sounds that we want. And then we have a pretty convincing scene for not a lot of time investment. We've mainly used that spawner to get a just beginning piece there, and then we are using all of the other mass edit presets, and it comes together incredibly quickly using this technique of the spawner for the baseline and then throwing down all of these presets and tiles to round out the rest of the scene. You, of course, also don't have to start from scratch. We've got a variety of templates. This one is from today's release, and it is our cave template. And here we have a few different features. First off, there is this really nice foreground layer tile that is set up with multi-phase tiles that allows you to give some nice three-dimensionality and cycle between different looks, whether that's a crystal cave or a settlement of some sort, or more of a standard rocky cave here. So we go with crystal, and then we have the overlay on the terrain down at the bottom with the terrain spawner already in place. We can activate and change the overlay. Go into our caves and mines and select our favorite here. And I'm already pretty happy with this position. This one's already got some lights to kind of imply entrances, etc. We're going to also make some adjustments on these. And if we're using mass edit, we can change the color all together here. And maybe we can give it a nice kind of light blue green look to match the crystals and kind of imply that here is an entrance from torches. And then the rest of this is from the crystals. You could make it, maybe make it look like there is another entrance over this way. You have some other glowing bits from the crystals deeper in as well. And there's even some cave sounds already set up that you can adjust the darkness activation, et cetera, to turn that on. And of course, we can use our mass edit presets to add additional pieces here. So we've got more crystals that we can add in. And if you use a brush, you can manipulate these, again, like any other mass edit preset. We can rotate it, et cetera. And if we hold Control Shift, we can cycle through everything, find the pieces that we want, and add in additional lights and color here. And when we're ready, we can drop the lights, which will give us a really nice bit of atmosphere here. So very quickly with this template, we've already got some great design elements going on that lend themselves to some storytelling. The party probably enters from one of these cave entrances, and then maybe they're trying to go deeper into this crystalline area, or maybe they're trying to explore the other branch here or perhaps it's a choice. Do they go the more dangerous route that might be faster to their destination, or do they take the longer, more well-traveled route? And we've created that in just a few seconds, starting off with that terrain spawner scene and this great template piece that we have here. We're gonna wrap up this showcase and tutorial on terrain spawners by giving you an overview of some of the assets and scenes that are available in today's release. Again, that's where all of the different cave images and assets and the cave terrain spawner came from. So if you're interested in picking this up for your own use, then check out our Patreon. We hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial on terrain spawners. 
We obviously love them a lot. They're really incredible tools for getting started quickly with an amazing backdrop for a scene, and they can provide some inspiration on their own with their random nature. And we don't even think this is the limit of Terrain Spawner's capabilities. As we said, there's a lot that you can customize and change about them, and so we think there's even further evolution that can take place here. So in the comments, let us know if you have ideas on ways to improve or expand upon the functionality of terrain spawners in a way that will make them even better for making maps. We absolutely take a look at these and keep them in consideration using those ideas to push everything forward. So thank you in advance for letting us know your thoughts. Speaking of, this topic was actually largely inspired thanks to feedback from our mastery tier coaching students who expressed not knowing that much about the train spawners and being really impressed by what they could do. A lot of the customization ideas within this tutorial are directly from lessons that I've delivered with our coaching students through the mastery program. So take a look at that if you're interested in the same kind of one-on-one -on -one experience. This has been Zephyr with the Bailey Wiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content. And check out our Patreon if you're interested in picking up the assets showcased here today or joining our mastery program. Once again, this has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching. Happy gaming and have a good one.